they are the same people. <laughs> so we'll call them the Five Million Club. Are they important? Don't lie. You, if you are Italian and if you are here, you belong to the Five Million Club. <laughs> Are we important? <laughs> Obviously, but we do not decide elections. On the other hand, television, and not just news bulletins, is pivotal because it molds images, sends out signals, jerk knees, tells you some things, and crucially, hushes up others. Guess who owns private television and controls public TV in Italy? It's like Peter Weir's fine film, The Truman Show. Someone help us think. Five, the Hoover Factor. Hoover, founded in 1908 at New Berlin, now Canton in Ohio, USA, is synonymous with vacuum cleaners, which is why we Hoover with them. Hoover's door-to-door -door salesmen were, and still are, tenacious, legendarily skillful psychologists, ruthless in their pursuit of a sale. Mr. B has brought a flair for commercial seduction with him from his previous careers in real estate, television, and advertising, and now applies it to politics. He knows the message has to be easily digestible, digestible, appealing, and reassuring. He believes in repeating it. He knows the powers of numbers, and he is convinced that in an appearances obsessed nations, la bella figura, image is key. In Italy, making the right impression wins hands down over doing the right things, I'm afraid. Six, the Zelig factor. <laughs> this is very serious. <laughs> the Zelig factor. All politicians need to be able to identify with their interlocutors. Few are capable of actually turning into them. In need for approval, as taught Mr. B, transformation skill Woody Allen Zelig would be proud of. A family man with his children, and two wives while it lasted. A ladies man with the ladies, youthful with the young, wise with the old, a night owl with a night set, a worker at the workplace, entrepreneurial with the business community, a football fan in the stadium, rossonero to the core with AC Milan supporters, Milanese with the people of Milan, Lombard with the people of Lombardy, Italian with the people from southern Italy, <laughs> Neapolitan, a Neapolitan among Neapolitans and their music. If he went to see a basketball game, he'd walk out taller. <laughs> Seven, the harem <laughs> factor, with an H. <laughs> Silvio's predilection for women, long an open secret in his business circles and then in Rome's corridors of power, became public knowledge in 2009 when he attended Noemi Letizia's 18th birthday party and reports began to circulate about his soiree at Palazzo Grazioli and holiday at Villa Certosa. At first, Mr. B denied everything before owning up. Am I faithful? Frequently. <laughs> Good. And then floating the tag. I'm not saying. The revelation left him unscathed. He lost his wife, but not his electoral base. Lots of Italians who prefer self-indulgence to self-discipline admit that Mr. B does what they can only dream of doing. But there is more to this than titillation. Youth is contagious, and as they knew in ancient Greece, where pretty young things of both sexes took advantage to learn from the old. Cosa che le vedine non fanno. One of Mr. B's long-term associates recalls how restless the great man was during marathon meetings. Quote, he was clearly worried he'd catch old age from us. Eight, the Medici factor. 
Together with the comune or municipality, the signoria, you can translate with absolute lordship, but I guess most of you know what the signoria is, is Italy's only original political invention. All, all the others, from feudalism to monarchies, total, totalitarian, totalitarianism, federalism, <coughs> and parliamentary democracy have been imported from France, Britain, Germany, Spain, or United States. Their Italian incarnations have always been slightly artificial, from fascist <coughs> awkwardness to today's passive parliament. But the signoria stirs ancient instinct. The attitude of many modern Italians towards Mr. B is reminiscent, uh, reminiscent of how their forebears viewed the signore. We know he's thinking about his own glory, family, and interest, but we hope he'll spare a thought for us, too. <laughs> Giuseppe Prazzolini, an Italian writer who lived, uh, who lived for 100 years and died at the end of, of, um, of the 20th century, Giuseppe Prezzolini noted, quote, since they were forced to lead uh, such a dangerous life, the signori learned to be penetrating of service of men. End of quote. Cosimo, founder of Florence's great Medici dynasty, is reported to have been a prudent man capable of summing up people at a single glance. Mr. B is also reckoned to be a formidable judge of human nature to which he looks for admiration, not criticism, adulation, not betrayal, and affection, not appraisal. The Tina factor. Tina, the reason no alternative. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher's classic acronym says it all about many voters. The centre-left's alternative has, has, has proved unappetizing. Strife-torn coalitions, poor proposals and an hypocritical posturing. Communism root are obvious in the Democratic Party, they're undeniable, and Mr. B never fails to point out, as Mr. B never fails to point out, Romano Prodi's suspiciously symmetrical failures elected in 96 and 2006 to be turfed out in 98 and 2008 has a certain aesthetic charm, <laughs> but left a cumbersome heritage. Italians are realists. Before choosing what they think is right, <coughs> they take what they believe to be useful. Some of Mr. B's initiative have been well received, or at least better received than the alternative abolition of the ICI, each tax on the first homes, fighting illegal immigration, the campaign against organized crime and the reform of the highway code. If they prove to be successful, there are plenty of media channels there to remind us of the fact. If they aren't, there aren't, there is someone ready to sweep it all under the carpet. And the United Center Right is at least as reassuring as a divided center left is annoying. If the only way to keep a political alliance together is to own it, Mr. B was quick to work out the cost in terms of economics, politics, and nervous energy without attending the LSE. Actually, the only university he has been to is not part of the book. The only university he visited ever, it was Chepu. The <laughs> in July, a <laughs> non-Italian non chapel is a, is a is a university where they it's a private university. They give uh, well, how can I translate that? They they give the degrees by correspondence. <laughs> So, Mr. B 